Hello, welcome back to African Theatre One. One more time, my name is African Professor One. Subscribe, share, please subscribe, share with friends and family. I recommend to them about this platform because uh, it's very informative. So when you come here, you won't be disappointed because I have a range of a lot of videos and it's unscripted. Um, I talk about uh, geopolitical, economic, social, cultural. I sometimes talk about romantic relationships. So when you come to this platform, you won't be disappointed. So it's unscripted. I don't edit anything. I don't proofread when I finish up things because I believe that truth is only one. And so no over dramatization over there, no drama. That's it. So one more time, this is African Theater One, and my name is African Professor One. So today's topic will be about Ukraine Russia war. And uh, the title is African leaders are wasting their time and energies with Putin in an effort to try to broker a peace deal between Putin and Ukraine. Let me repeat, I said African leaders or many of the African leaders going to Russia or wherever are just wasting their time and energy with Putin, you know, in their effort to broker a peace deal between all to try to get Putin to stop the war in, you know, in Ukraine. So why am I saying that? It's not that I don't believe in peace. I'm a pacifist. I believe in peace, you know, but uh, truth, like I said, truth is one. It's only one. So I'm a realist. And so I see the world as it is. And so uh, I'm not going to just, like I said, over dramatize or say things you know, for make, to make people happy about themselves, take people to laugh about what they think is not true. So I'm just telling it as it is. What I'm saying is Putin doesn't really, really respect African leaders, period. Putin, it's all about Putin and his country, Russia, and you know, how he want to be like uh, Peter the Great. And so he has read a lot about Peter the Great and so there's a lot of things. It's ever or mother's operandi, the way he doing things. It's almost like he copycatting uh, Peter the Great. And so Putin doesn't necessarily, you know, believe in what the peace, occult peace mission, many of the African leaders, you know, have taken upon themselves to try to go and to Moscow or to St. Petersburg to meet him, to have photo ops because for Putin, the only thing he's interested in for me, you know, a lot of the African leaders to meet him is he won't photo ops. He wants to take pictures with them, standing there, pretend like he's laughing, for to make the United States and other Western nations jealous. That look, all the African leaders are on my side. Look at how they're coming to me. And so that's all that is. But as far as sincerity, as far as Putin is interested in or whatever uh, mission or whatever. Uh, suggestion or proposals, peace proposals, African leaders led by Ramaphosa of South Africa, you know, uh, came out with. It's not even interested, it's not even relevant to Putin. That's a fact. Putin is authoritarian, he's very authoritarian, he's egoistic, and uh, very selfish. It's all about him and his power and how he feel like he's going about to try to restore Russia glory in the pre-Soviet days. And so for Putin, Putin was a former KGB member, the secret, you know, uh, police were in Russia. And Putin witnessed, one time he was stationed in East Germany, the communist part of, uh, so he witnessed the first hand, the disintegration of the break up of the Soviet Union. And so Putin, you know, viewed that breakup as one of the geopolitical errors in the 20th century or in the history of Russia civilization. And so what Putin is doing today uh, by invading Ukraine is one of the Putin agenda to try to restore that Soviet glory, past glory. And so Putin will stop at nothing until he achieve his goals. And one of his goals is trying to get Ukraine because he sees Ukraine 
as one of the trophy, prize trophies that he won because think about it, Ukraine, you know, has one of the richest land in the land, in the world. And they produce most of the about thirty five percent or so, you know, where grain, you know, like we where we get flour from comes from there. And so Putin really, really, really feel like he cannot sit there, he cannot afford to sit there to let Ukraine try to have a, has an ambition to try to become a member of NATO, which is, you know, Western Allied military organization. And so Putin will do wherever he can to stop or tame or get Ukraine to be part of Russia. And that is Putin's main agenda. I don't know why Africa, I don't know if African leaders are abreast of the time or really, really understand the history or the geopolitical issues in that part of the world, you know, in Russia, you know, around Ukraine and Russia. And so Ramaphosa, instead of focusing his energy and time in South Africa, that is having, you know, inflation that's going over the roof. They have high mass unemployment, crime is over the roof everywhere. South Africa, according to most, you know, international global bankers and economists, you know, they predict that if Ramaphosa and his government, you know, do not act fast, there's a possibility that South Africa can fail as a nation, can be a fair nation because of all this economic turmoil out of crimes and corruption. But this guy is wasting his time going into Russia to try to broker a peace deal that is beyond his control. It's beyond, it's naively leaving, leading a whole bunch of African leaders and go to Moscow or St. Petersburg and meet Putin, who is not interested in their proposal. And so that is what I'm trying to say that, that is the reason I'm saying African leaders are wasting their time because if it would have been maybe productive if Putin is reasonable and interested in whatever peace proposal or deal the uh, African leaders have under their sleeve. But guess what? Putin is not interested in that. It's a fact. Putin knows it, and uh, many of these African leaders knows it, but I don't know why they're wasting time and their energy to fly all the way to uh, Moscow to try to do peace, which it will never happen. And again, Putin started this unprovoked war. Ukraine did not attack Russia in any way. They, everybody knows that. It's, it was an unprovoked war or invasion in February last year, 22, I mean 2022. So the only person who has the key, master key, in stopping this war is Putin himself. So the, again, the question is, do you think Putin is interested in that? No, because of the reason I've given you, Putin feel like he want to restore the past glory of the Soviet Union because he had, he had already lost Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, many of these, you know, states surrounding Russia. And now the bigger republic among all these, you know, among all these former uh, states of Soviet Union, which is Ukraine, is trying to become a member of NATO. And so Putin sees that as an existential threat to the very survivor of Russia. And so wherever, remember, Putin is sitting over on over 5,000 nuclear warheads. That is why every night there, Putin threatened the world that if it becomes necessary, he won't rule out using nuclear weapons. And so that is what it is. And so Putin feel like he's powerful, more, you know, more powerful than Ukraine. Ukraine doesn't have nuclear weapons. And so he can do wherever he, he, he can and just, you know, get away with it. And that is what, assuming Togo has invaded another country, what do you think the international, you know, international community will do? Or Nigeria has invaded Togo or Benin, what do you think the international community response will be? But guess what? This is a powerful nation. And so again, when you see the behavior of African leaders, and, you know, vis-a-vis -vis this powerful nation like China, Russia, United States, France, and wherever, you sit there and ask yourself, does this or do these African leaders really, really understand the dynamics of contemporary international relations? And like I said in one of my previous video, why I think Putin will not pay attention to African leaders because they're wasting their time. In the international arena, 
or in the international relation, in the art of international relation, the powerful do whatever they can do with their power and get away with a whole bunch of things. They use their power to get away with and most of the things they want because we don't have global police you know, institution. So the powerful nations, the power of mental nations have turned themselves into the world police people and they set the rules and they say for the weaker nations and then by the rules do not apply to them. And that is exactly what Russia is doing. China dies it too, United States do it, France do it. So that is what it is. So in the international arena, the powerful, it was said by one of the greatest Greek philosophers. He wrote a book, The History of Philippolinian War. And in that book, he argued, and that book has become like a, uh, the basis or the yastic for, or for the basis of international relations. That guy, Tacitus, is considered to be the father of international relations. And he argued that in the international arena, the powerful do what they, they can do or do what their power allowed them to do and get whatever they got. And the weak accept what they have to accept. That is what it is. And then in the international arena, the standard of justice is, is only defined or can only be define when there is an what equality of power in other words the standard of justice is defined by equality of power think about it china and ghana when they're dealing can we have justice can the justice true justice exist between china and ghana or you know china and say togo or nigeria no because china is powerful more powerful than Ghana or Togo. So, in other words, when we're talking about justice, justice always will be defined by the powerful nation. And that is what it is. That is what is happening between Ukraine and Russia. Think about it. Because Putin sit on a nuclear weapon, he defined what justice is. Think about it. But when it comes to, say, Russia and United States, maybe there may be justice will be equal because guess what? Both of them are powerful nations. And so that is what I Tosidides argued a long time ago to the effect that you know what? The standard of justice, international justice, is defined by the equality of power. And when you look at the world, the powerful nations, they control the world, Russia, China, United States, France, and wherever, and justice is defined, can only be defined by power, the quality of power. And so when you hear people say uh, unjust world economic order, because in the international arena, all countries are not powerful or do not have equal power. So the power, the most powerful ones, among them, justice prevail among them. But when it comes to a powerful nation, more powerful nation and a weaker nation, well, you see that how it is? So that is basically what is happening in Russia today, what Putin is doing. And so that is the reason I'm saying that, guess what? African leaders should stop wasting their time and energy going to Russia because the standard of justice is defined or can properly be defined when there is equality of power. But when it comes to Russia and Ukraine, there is no equality of power here. One sit on over 5,000 nuclear warheads the other one, Ukraine doesn't have it. And so guess what? Whoever has the power can get away with wherever they can. And the weaker nations, like say Ukraine, have to accept what it is. The only thing Ukraine can do now is just defend their country. They can attack Russia because look at it. Russia can attack Ukraine, but Ukraine cannot attack it because the power, there's no equality of power. If Ukraine dare to attack Russia, there will be a justification for Russia to use nuclear weapons to flood in the whole place, you see? That is why Tosidides argued in 431 BC, in his book, The History of Polynesian War, it has become the standard book or the standard uh, talking point for international relations. So when you see countries behaving the way they're behaving, the bigger countries, the powerful countries, it's because they define what justice is. Because power, it's not equal in the international relations. 
And that is what it is. So that is why I'm telling African leaders to stop wasting their time. They know it. And learn, if they don't know, learn the contemporary understanding, learn the contemporary meaning of international relations so they won't waste their time. It's just like a poor person trying to advise a billionaire. See, that is what it is. You are poor somewhere. You don't even have food to eat. How can you advise or make a suggestion to a billionaire? And that is what is happening. So African nations are poor compared to Russia. How can you tell Putin what to do? You see, so it's a waste of time and energy. That is, that's all I want to say. So one more time, this is Africa Professor One. My name is, this, my name is Africa Professor One, Robert, and the forum is Africa Theater One. So subscribe and share to Africa Theater One. And one more time, this is your spokesperson, Africa Professor One. I talk to you and I told you, I don't edit anything, all the mistakes, everything. That is what it is. It's the truth, and that is all that is. So come on here, subscribe and share with friends and family. Recommend is very, very informative. And you know, so I talk to you another time. One more time. This is Africa Professor One. That's my name and Africa Theater One. Have a good day. I talk to you another time. Bye.